A Hidden People contains mature language, content, and themes. Please listen with care. The purposes of a challenge are many and varied. Ah, trainer, you finally returned. A liter of freshly squeezed pomegranate juice as requested, Eve. Some challenges we give ourselves to become better, stronger, more able individuals. Squeezed by your hands, correct? Aye, one seed at a time, as requested by the court. Some challenges are given to others because we believe in their possibility to achieve those self-same qualities. Commanded. You do know the court commands you, don't you, trainer? Aye, as commanded by the court. Good. But this was commanded a half hour ago. And now I am no longer thirsty. Clean that up, changeling, and don't leave a single stain. The Snow Wolf's fur is an antique from the time of the Old God. And you were using it as a rug? <laughs> Indeed. Do be quick. Alder Orin will be arriving at noon to discuss the upcoming reaping. He would surely have some interesting questions for you about how a historic relic such as this came to be damaged. And some challenges are given simply to break you. Writers Movement presents The Hidden People, starring Jordan Lopez, Stephen Gogol, Sean Gunther, Xander Hildenbrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Luna Madison. Season 2, Episode 15, Ultimatum, written by Alexa Fett Fisher, directed by Chris and Megan Burnside. Also starring Sarah Amar, Aaron Crane, David Gaylor, Sarah Hudson, and Norb Wessels. Thick and dry shite tool of a pox bottle! Uh, I didn't understand a lot of that, but it sounded like Irish for angry. Treating me like a feckin' freshman running around, doing the messages like I'm some langer. Is any of that slang for murder because your fingers are red? What? No. No, it's pomegranate juice. Stained me in about every cloth in a meter radius. Okay, I'll bite. Why pomegranate juice? Fuck if I know! I've never seen one of the hidden eat anything. Is it Neve? Of course it's old Neve. No one else ever summons me, even though they all have the power to. It's just her sending me from trivial task to use this errand to uncomfortable position. <sighs> Knowing that I'm going to feel really shitty if the answer is yes. Is she doing this because of the deal I struck with her? Yes. Thanks for that. So if she's going to keep hazing you, to what end? Just to fuck with you? Well, she can't kill me thanks to your very specific wording. But there's nothing that says she can't make me wish I were dead. Don't joke about that. I know, it's not that bad. Yet. The whole thing feels like a crappy job with an asshole boss that I just can't wait to quit. 
Um, you're a trust fund baby with multiple vacation homes in beautiful foreign countries. Have you ever had a crappy job? Well, no, but I've seen the storyline on the telly. <laughs> right, well, in not TV land, we only stay in crappy jobs we hate because we need the money. And you don't, so the analogy doesn't really work. But I still want to have the dramatic storm and out scene when I finally do quit. You've let Riley talk you into watching classic shows instead of training her, haven't you? She's very convincing. Where is the newbie? I had her step sideways over to Connolly so she knows an escape route in case something happens here. But then she met Nyssa and had all these questions about computers and coding, so I just left her there for a bit. Oh, so you can quit change and then sit in when you get bored. But I've got to work myself to the bone, fulfilling all Geneve's stupid whims. Right, well, you can't quit. You have a contract. Humans break contracts all the time. Well, you're not human, and you said yourself that getting out of a contract with the Hidden is impossible. Every time I've said something is impossible, you've made it your personal mission to prove me wrong. Why not this? I think I'm rubbing off on you, Shaylee. Yeah, you are. That king again! Another summons? Of course it is. I'll be back as soon as I can. So, what I do more or less depends on what I want to do. For example, taking down a site is really simple if you use a distributed denial of service attack. That's DDoSing, right? Yeah, that's right. Just overloading the system with too many requests for it to process. I always thought you needed, like, a bunch of computers and people for that. Not really. I run a client program to multiple handlers, so to the targeted service, my one computer looks like many different ones. But the bigger servers would have some kind of protection for that, wouldn't they? Like, another hacker furiously typing on the other end? Not so much that, but if the requests all come from one source or from too many foreign sources, they deny them before they can overload their system. You're smirking. You have a way around that too, don't you? Of course I do. Specific client programs that look like they come from reasonable local sources, so they're not flagged by security protections. Not an easy thing to fake digitally. That is... You are so cool. What else do you do? Well, it's a bit more time consuming, but if I wanted to break into a system rather than shut it down... You hack into the mainframe? That's not a thing. You bypass the firewall. Still fictional buzzwords. You fish for passwords. With a PH, but without the extended jams. Yeah, that's more on this side of reality. But like I said, time consuming. You've got to find your target, get past their spam folder, and hope they open the email with the spyware infected attachment. That's why I usually go small or plan way in advance. Nissa! Mac and Shaylee aren't answering my texts. And I don't need to see Thomas and Sam playing tonsil hockey again. Ugh. Once through a computer screen was enough. I don't know how either of those things led you here. I'm bored. Alfie, just because you're sleeping on my couch doesn't mean I'm your keeper. So, finding the target is easy enough. <sighs> Most companies have employee contact info somewhere online, including their email addresses. But I'll die without attention. So, do you have to do that manually, or do you have a search program? Wither away into nothingness. Of course I have a search program. Did you name it Tron? Technically, we're the hackers, so it would be Clue, wouldn't it? Young Jeff Bridges' Clue or Corrupted Genocidal Clue? Young Clue teamed up with Cora and Yori because there were not enough women in either movie. And Clue was Young Jeff Bridges, even when he was corrupted and genocidal. Okay, the corruption refers to the hack job of de-aging special effects they did in the sequel. Look, the effects were advanced for their time. Preference. Original or Legacy? Original, but synced up to the Legacy soundtrack. Marry me? Well, I'm supposed to meet Shaylee and Mac for training in, like, 
five minutes ago, but I'm free this Friday. You do know Alfie asked to marry you, not out for coffee, right? Friday works for me. Great. I'll leave the planning to you. FYI, I'm allergic to lilies, so keep those out of the bouquet. Gotta run, Nissa. See you later. Later, Riley. Later. You can pick your draw up off the floor now. So, that's... The new changeling. Yep. Riley. Huh. I guess Mac's weird instant attraction thing applies to changelings, too. <sighs> no, Alfie, it doesn't. Huh. Stop drooling, you'll stain my rug. You wouldn't believe the traffic. Shaylee's not back yet, so you can't sweet talk me into watching movies instead of training. I mean, come on. You really haven't seen Changeling? Clint Eastwood directing Angelina Jolie? It's literally like the first thing I thought of when you guys were all, you're not really who they say you are. Hey, uh, what's with all the books? Does the beach house have a library? The world's your library when you can step sideways. Holy smokes. I can sneak into pretty much any movie I want that way, can't I? No sneaking. You have more training to do. Once Shaylee gets back... Oh! You smell gross! Did you know the hidden use bloody latrines? Thousands of years of advancement in waste management and those uppity pricks still prefer holes in the ground! Is very shit magical, like... A special ingredient in a spell, or... No, and it isn't made of rainbows and glitter either. Then why are you reenacting the Shawshank Redemption, exactly? (sighs) Didn't Eve order you to clean the bathrooms? With a toothbrush, Muck. My toothbrush. What a mega bitch. She's like Nurse Ratched, Regina George, and Claire Underwood smashed into one awful person with a powdered sugar dusting of Cersei Lannister on top. I'll never be clean again. You'll be clean and free once we break you out of that contract. Oh, found a way around impossible already, have you? Well, I've been researching. You know there's Wi-Fi here, right? You could have researched digitally without the Fortress of Solitude made of books. Yeah, well, I did it the old-fashioned way. And... And every legend about breaking fake contracts is less about breaking and more about loophole finding. I could have told you that. What we need is the specific wording of the contract. We focus on the exact words to find the loophole. Great. So, did you get a copy at signing, Shaylee? One of those pink or yellow carbon copy papers that are smudged and impossible to read two weeks later? Hidden contracts are spoken, not written. But I remember the words what the Magister said before I began my training. Okay, if I'm right, there should have been a time limit, right? Most of the job contract lore I've seen is for a set period of time, even if it's something ridiculous like a thousand years. Yes, technically there's a limit. Right, so I'm thinking our best bet is time magic then. Something that bends time around you so you fulfill the bounds of the contract. Ooh, can we time travel? Like, just jump her forward however many years it takes? No, then we'd just be missing her for however many years it takes. There's plenty of room in the TARDIS for everyone. We'll just go with. The contract isn't to a set date like that. Oh, what if we use magic to aid Shaylee? Like Fred and George in the Goblet of Fire. I mean, I don't think constructs can die of old age. You aren't listening. The contract isn't to a set period of time. I'm bound to the court until death. My death. Hey Sam, it's Ron. Guess, uh, guess you haven't changed your voicemail yet. Which is totally fine. Just reminding you in case you forgot about it. Tick. 
Right, so I just wanted to call and chat. Maybe just, I don't know, catch up? His friends? I mean, we were sort of becoming friends. At least I thought so. And, and maybe you didn't, which would be totally fine and understandable. But maybe just call me back? Or text? That's fine, too. I'd like to know how you're holding up. And pick your brain about things. Okay, cool. That, that was it. Short and sweet, you know me. <laughs> uh, sit well out. Hey, Sam. It's Thomas again. I know you said you needed some space, but I just wanted to reach out and let you know that I'm available uh, if you need anything. Uh, not just about, you know, but anything in general. Uh, shopping, dinner, medical bills. I'm a bit of a Swiss Army guy, I guess. But uh, even if it's just a talk, I'm here. Always. Right. Honestly, I'm worried about you, Sam. So even if you don't want anything from me, could you just call me back to let me know you're alright? Or text me. Maybe stop by the house. Hell, I'll take smoke signals at this point. I just want to know that you're okay. There are some days where all you want is to be left alone. The former Detective Mulligan has been having more and more of these days recently. However, the universe rarely gives us what we want. Sam, are you home? Yeah, in the kitchen. Oh, hey, <laughs> there you are. Uh, the door was unlocked, so I let myself in. What are you up to? Just organizing some old paperwork. Paperwork? From what? Just... Thomas, what are you holding? Oh, I, uh... Well, I sort of stress bake. I'm aware. And I was thinking about you and how you've been going through a lot. So I made tiramisu. Well, actually, several tiramisu. I can't actually eat all of them myself. So I thought I'd just swing by with one to see if you were home. And yeah, I'm rambling. Tiramisu? Yeah. You thought I'd like tiramisu? Yeah? Thomas, what's in tiramisu? Oh, uh, it's Savoyardi dipped in coffee, layered with a whipped mixture of eggs, sugar, and mascarpone cheese, and dusted with cocoa. Savoyardi? Yeah. Also known as? Ladyfingers. Uh. Oh. Oh, shit! I'm so sorry! <laughs> I, di I didn't mean it! I did uh, uh, Sam? Are you all right? Uh, <laughs> Sam, you're freaking me out. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I wasn't thinking. I know. I know. I just, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. And I've done too much of that the past few weeks. <laughs> Sam, please believe me. I didn't think about this and, you know, you're... Uh... My lack of lady fingers? <laughs> oh, can I, can I call it a Freudian dessert? <laughs> oh... Much better than the last finger I ate. <laughs> Sam, that's too dark to make jokes about. It's dark comedy. So either laugh with me, or I'll be laughing alone. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's one way to deal with it. <laughs> I think I made some pretty inappropriate jokes after my parents died. See? Healthy. She says, eating a mound of caffeine and simple carbs. Healthy for the soul, Thomas. I didn't mean to interrupt if you were doing something. I guess in my mind you're always just sitting here alone. And you thought, what, I need you to come rescue me from myself? I thought we went over this last time. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just wanted to return the favor. When you came and rescued me on my birthday, I guess. Oh, right. Thanks. No, I've gotten that all out already. Now I'm just trying to find something to do. And you settled on tidying? No, I I mean, 
This is... Oh. This is Ron's obituary. Yeah. And the report from the responding officers who found him. The crime write-up in the local newspaper. It's just... It's like there's not enough of him. A whole life is gone, and this is what is left. It doesn't feel right to me. So you're not... You're not obsessing over Cygnus anymore? No, not obsessing. Not anymore, at least. Just trying to think constructive thoughts. What Cygnus did isn't your fault. I just... I keep saying that, but I could never believe it. I still feel so much guilt that even if it wasn't my fault, I should be doing something now. And that's why you're looking through all of this? Trying to find something you can do? Cygnus is dead, and I killed it. It will never hurt anyone again. Back when I was a detective, getting the bad guy was enough, but now... I'm not satisfied yet. You know, no one's ever really gone. Huh? I got a lot of that after, you know. You don't have to keep reliving that for me. I'm not reliving. It's just a part of me now. Anyway, this idea of legacy, what we leave behind after we're gone. Everybody dies, eventually, and we all leave behind something. Rich people leave behind grants and endowments. Parents leave behind children. Some people just leave behind the memories their friends have of them. Ron isn't just newspaper cutouts and police reports. He's your memories of him, too. And as long as you're thinking of him or someone is thinking of him, he has a legacy. A legacy. He could be more than that. What are you thinking? A legacy fund. Something with his name on it. To help others so that no one forgets him and that others can at least know his story. A scholarship, maybe? For the police academy. That sounds perfect, Sam. Thanks, Thomas. I'm going to get started looking up what needs to be done for that sort of thing. Paperwork and accounts or whatever. Would you mind having some help? I know you can handle it on your own. I just want to be useful. You are. And if you leave the rest of the tiramisu, you are more than welcome to stay and help. <laughs> Absolutely. What are you doing in here? Oh, hi! Welcome back! Shouldn't you be training with Shaylee and Mac or something? Nah, their conversation got a little... heavy. So I just stepped sideways back over here. But you were gone. Obviously you know that. But your computer was still on, so I... What did you do? Nothing yet. See, I had this idea from before. And I found this tutorial on Girls Who Code, and I just finished what I think will work. What did you do? I just said I haven't executed the program yet. Anyway, let me tell you the whole idea. So, people are stupid, right? Right? Continue. Person. Right. And they're lazy. Even when it comes to important stuff like passwords and security. So lazy, they'll reuse the same few passwords for different stuff. Okay. So, okay. Well, some websites are less secure than others. The home cook recipe blogs, the pro science fitness forums, the sell your homemade crap here websites. All of those usually run off of the same web builder format, which is notoriously hackable. The line of curiosity keeping me from perma-banning you from my digital space is pixel thin. My point, yes. Okay, if my algorithm works, you plug in the email address of your target, and if they used that email to sign up for any of those websites, the program trolls for the password they used. And boom, no phishing, just a really big net. A net that only works if we have an email address, and they signed up for those websites, and they use the same password. Look, 60% of the time, it'll work every time. And it should be really fast, too, see? Um, give me an email address. What's yours? 
I'm not giving you my email. <sighs> Scoot over. I'll type it in. Where's the command? Here? Yeah, between the parentheses. And here, young Riley learns a valuable lesson. Never let a hacker near your unsaved code without supervision. Like many stories, all it takes is the removal of one tiny character to send everything else crashing down around it. All right there. Show me what you've got. Okay, here it goes. What? No, no, no. I don't get it. This should have worked. I was a cyborg arm away from Skynet! Don't worry about it, kid. Everyone fudges their code the first time. I don't get it. I double-checked everything and... Oh, wait. There's a parenthesis missing. I can't believe you forgot to close a line. Beginner stuff. No, no, I'm sure I did. I just... Nissa, did you? What? No, of course not. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my glob, you did. You purposely messed up my code. I know what this is. Riley, listen, it was just a little- Hazing? OMG! You were totally hazing me, weren't you? Uh, maybe? Yay! I've read about this! It's like welcoming a person into the group, right? Oh gosh, you want me in your group? For really real? I, um... Well, um... Oh man, this is great! I've never been in a group before! Clearly. Hey, Niss, I... Riley, you're back! Fiance! Niss is hazing me! What? It's great! Is it? I'm happy if you're happy. Good answer, Mr. Proposal. Oh, that reminds me. Honeymoon. I'm torn between Universal Studios and Disney World. Universal? Duh! Yeah, but what about the new Star Wars exhibit now that our mousy overlord bought out the franchise? Yes, but, hear me out, I can do actual magic at Hogwarts. Oh man, eat your heart out, JK. Mother Goddess, help me, there are two of them. I'm sorry, Mac. There's no way out of this... I'm bound to the court for life. No, no, you're bound until death. That's the specific wording, right? Yes, but maybe you haven't thought of this. I don't want to die. But you already have. My fetch killed you. Your contract should have ended with your death. What were the words? What? What were the words? The exact words you used when you bargained with the Magister. Bring her back. You sure? Yes, it was very dramatic. I said it like three times. Bring her back. Back. Not to remake. The bloody, stupid, idiot wording. No. Yes. Back. Remade me exactly as I was, with all my memories. But also all my ties to the court. So, if I had just said something different, we wouldn't be in this mess. The Magister would have found some other way to fuck us over. Remade me without my memories and experience. Or brought me back as a wee babe or something. Baby Shaylee would have been pretty adorable. Back. I was fierce and mighty from the moment I left the womb. Except you were never in a womb, so... Don't change the subject. The solution is right here. I need to die to be out of the contract. And until I'm out of the contract, the court could make me do anything. Older Neve could keep calling me back so I'm worthless at helping you. Any of the other Olders could command me to do something horrible. There's no way out. Don't say that. There's still time to figure something out before then. But what if you don't, Mac? What if this is the one impossible thing you can't fix? Mac, if the court commands me to do something... something horrible... And I can't stop it. You... You may have to stop me. What? Fuck no, there's no way! I I can't do that! You might have to. It's the only way if the court commands me to do something we can't take back or fix. They've made me do it before. 
What if they targeted something more important the next time? I couldn't live with myself if I caused anything bad to happen to... The people I care about. Mac, I... Fuck, not again, not now! No, no way, you do not get to drop a bombshell like that and just step sideways out! God damn it! Trainer, I have a job for you. What? What is it this time, hmm? Emptying out all the hearths with chopsticks? Maybe cleaning the windows with my tongue? What now? The elders would have you send word to our human agents to prepare for the reaping. However, if you are preoccupied with other menial tasks such as those... Only the stupid busy work Alder Neve's been sending me off on. I was just telling the other alders how since your search for McKenna Thorne has given them nothing... Perhaps you would have more success with the tasks typically relegated to lesser constructs. And you expect me to produce better results with even more on my plate? Honestly, we'd settle for any results from you, trainer. Perhaps we're being unfair, expecting too many results from just a single changeling. Alders, would you approve expediting the search for McKenna Thorne by sending a sentinel in place of the trainer? Alder Nile. Perhaps one of yours? I've already told you. I can't find her. How do you bloody expect- She speaks false. <laughs> it's all in the wording, Shaley. The stupid, bloody, idiot wording. What exactly was false, Inquisitor? Trainer? I- Trainer, I command you to speak true. Have you found McKenna Thorne? The rogue assassin is finally revealed, Alder Orin. I believe we know what must be done. You will bring McKenna Thorne to us by next nightfall, or... Enough, Alder Neve. It's time we end this. Trina, kill McKenna Thorne or die trying. And some challenges, even if you succeed. Hayden Riders Movement presents The Hidden People. Executive producers Chris Burnside and Megan Burnside. Producers Alexa Fett Fisher, Xander Hildebrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Jordan Lopez. Lead writer Chris Burnside. Script editor Alexa Fett Fisher. Sound design, score, and original music by Catherine Seaton. Sound engineer. Colin Susich. Theme song by Catherine Seaton and Michael Yates. For more of the Hidden People, visit our website at hiddenpeoplepodcast.com. <laughs>